Hi everybody, uh, welcome to a really short video. Uh, as you're aware, uh, I had said on my previous videos that uh, things were going to be a little bit sporadic for a couple of weeks uh, with commitments work-wise and at weekends. Uh, but I wanted to just quickly share with you uh, my finished uh, travel barrel project. Um, I finally got round, as you've seen in a couple of recent videos, to painting the figures. And I've now also completed the boards. Um, so the set is complete. I'm looking forward to now uh, giving the game a rollout. Um, and again, from things I've read about the game, yes, it's very simple. Um, but I may well even consider writing my own uh, house set um, with, with what I feel would be more of a Napoleonic feel. But uh, we'll see on that one. But I just wanted to share with you very quickly the finished article um, and uh, show you again sort of some close-ups of some of the bits and pieces that I've done. Um, as you can see, you've got the board. I've set them up into a mock three brigades, uh, which is the uh, the normal setup with this game. Uh, you can see we've got the the woods with the removable tops. So these are just hard plastic, um, and all I've done there is used the uh, the foundries forest green uh, with a soft tone wash um, and for the woods themselves which I'll show you a close up of the tiles in a moment um, I've used some wildwood uh, contrast and um, some horse tone brown to bring out the tree stumps uh, but again same on this side uh, so you can pop the figures in there as you as you wish um, like so to represent them being in those terrain areas um, we've got some of the buildings these are all interchangeable so these are some thatched buildings let's uh, see if we can get that to zoom in a little bit better there we go there we go so they're really easy to paint um, again all I did was a um, grey undercoat, a um, couple of washes and then um, wildwood for the windows, uh, okra for the um, thatched roofs and then just a soft tone brown wash over the top um, and they just push in nicely into there. You've, you've got the same with the bigger, bigger farm buildings and then you've got some of the more traditional kind of brick slate uh, buildings as well. So again, exactly the same process, um, but I think I've just used red oxide uh, for the roof. But ultimately the, the painting pattern is exactly the same. Um, so again, that these can be moved around the board uh, within any of the areas, they've got the little holes in them. Um, so you can again, make the board, you can, you can rotate the boards um, and you'll see that they're completely interchangeable with the rows, whatever format you have them in, which I really like that. I think it's a really clever design. Um, so obviously, you would move the figures around on the on the sides accordingly, but you can get a feel there for how that how that works uh, like so. Uh, my previous update on the painting table kind of showed you um the figures themselves so i'm, I'm not going to kind of hone in on those again at this stage um i think you've, you've got a kind of a good feel for for what that's all about uh, let's just make sure these are the right way again i think that's right there we go um but what i'm going to do is to show you some close-ups of the tiles and what i've done with those as well Okay, so we've taken the uh, figures off. I just wanted to show you uh, what I've done with the boards here. So I did a lot of research online about how people have uh, done the boards. And the general consensus, certainly from Perry's, was that you didn't need to undercoat. You could just paint straight on with dry brushes. Uh, and that's actually what I've what I've kind of done there to get this hopefully you can see on the on the camera there this kind of mottled 
green effect. So I've used again uh, Foundry Forest Green, uh, dry brushed uh, the B and C colors um, onto there, um, and then and then done a couple of washes again. Uh, started off with strong tone and then soft tone on on the top once the green had been put on and you you ended up with this kind of nice mottled effect uh, you can see on the hills there hopefully again you can sort of see that um, in the camera there you get this nice kind of differential in colors in terms of the roads uh, I did a wildwood contrast wash first uh, and again, then I've used uh, various browns, uh, coat to arms and army painter just to, to, till I got happy with the colour. And likewise with the fields, we started off with a wash. And then I've used just some, some general sort of different types of browns there. Uh, and done a dry brush of buff on a couple of them just to highlight and bring out uh, something a little bit different in the, in the field layout there. Uh, the walls, again, started off exactly the same as the buildings with a grey uh, undercoat. And then we've just done Austrian white uh, foundry. Um, I think it was the C colour there. Um, and again, we've just done a soft tone wash uh, kind of to, to give you a flavour of, of what that looks like as well. Okay. Um, the other board, very similar, um, exactly the same, obviously, format in terms of the painting of the tile. Um, you'll see there we've got some fields with slightly different colours in. Again, just to break those up a little bit. Um, let's just show you um, a little bit, if we can get it with the light, this is the only thing. Uh, hopefully this way might be better. Uh, let's just... Zoom that in as best we can. Our camera is not playing ball this morning. Um, so because I'm doing it upside down to keep the light out, you might not be able to see it fully, but you can get a feel there. Uh, you've got the dark colours are the wild wood, and then you've just done a brown to bring out the clumps on the trees, the, the logs and or trunks. And then if you put that underneath, you can kind of see how that then all fits together there. So hopefully that kind of gives you a good flavour. Um, and again, you've got the, the fields uh, with the surrounding farmhouses and the roads again on, on there. So really enjoyed this little project. Um, it's just enabled me to put together a little game that obviously I can take out on the road if I'm going away anywhere. Uh, when When the guys and us get back to maybe the odd weekend uh, away with a show, maybe not quite yet, but we're, we're getting there. Um, then this is something that I could pull out on a Saturday evening and uh, that we can have a little game of. And likewise, just something if you've got someone um, who maybe is not a war gamer per se, uh, is open to playing a game. This is a good introductory game. Uh, it's quick. It's easy to set up. It's a very small um, space in terms of take up uh, it's something you could take round someone's house and introduce them to um, war gaming uh, or, or admittedly um, a very low level a basic level of war gaming but it would certainly give them a flavor um, in, in, in terms of what war gaming is all about so that's uh, my travel battle project experience complete um hope you've enjoyed this very short video just summing up uh what i've done there and i uh, hope to be bringing some more videos to you very very soon bye for now